So we've been talking about the muscles and the bones of the body, and we've introduced the concepts um, and the tissues, the connected tissue in the body, and how this relates to everything else. And right now we're going to introduce how we create systems of movement and how this is going to affect, um, as an introductory way, how prana moves through the body. And prana is going to be uh, is a much larger topic. So. The bones that we have going through here, well, the bones in here, we do have a lot of musculature that we can use to move these bones around the pelvis and the lower spine. And when we talk about extending the vertebral column upright and, and doing this so that circulation works even better uh, through the pelvic midsection up in the shoulders, neck, and throat area near the axial skeleton, when we're in a yoga posture for most of the hatha yoga postures, we're actually going to create movement here starting at the periphery. And the action that we take all the way down at the periphery is going to end up creating some sort of a shift or movement here. So the peripheral portions, especially these two right here, these are plugged into the ground and we've talked about the type of kinetic chain movements that those are going to represent. But when these are stuck, the action of these being attempted to move, and from here, we're gonna to have to create some tone in the legs, and then draw these towards each other, in towards the midline, and we're looking for this to have an effect here. And the effect here might not be dramatic in the, in the stance of the posture, but it will, or it can be dramatic in how everything else related to this area circulates. And this is gonna be more related to our concept of prana. Is, is the, the mass of prana, or the direction of circulation, does it seem to be flowing more downward? Does it seem to be more sedentary? Does it seem to be spreading out? Does it seem to be going out? And these are the different directions, or five, I didn't name them all, but these are the, the primary different pranas, the directions of movement in the regions they're associated with. So we're going to work on moving prana by creating a kinetic chain. And a kinetic chain is basically how we connect different sections of the body. Here, this is our shin and our, our femur area or the upper thigh bone. And we're looking for movement in here. And, and basically, when we separate the leg bones, these two femurs, Whenever we spread the legs out, we inspire prana to flow downward, and this is a very this is, can can be a very healthy thing. Um, but at the same time, prana can collapse downward, or the body can collapse downward. We'll see a lot of times in here people will kind of uh, hyperextend or overly mobilize different joint areas, and they'll even kind of crunch into the lumbar spine, and they may, may even kind of jam one side of the pelvis near the sacroiliac joint, uh, and on the other side, uh, they probably won't actually dislodge it, but they'll just kind of put a little bit of a stress to overstretch it. And that's all a collapse of going downward. So we separated the legs to try to get prana to flow down, but at the same time, we don't want it to collapse down. And we're gonna use movement through the body by connecting different sections, and we're gonna create movement here where we'd usually just use, for example, like a hamstring muscle to pull the heel towards the buttocks. You could use it for other things too. Uh, or use a calf muscle to press the toes down and lift the heel. This is kind of a compartment picture. And we want to create uh, a shift here by doing action, not movement, but by doing action down here. So the major set of muscles that we're gonna use to hug in at these peripheral points down here that are stuck into the yoga mat or to the floor, the main set of muscles we're going to use there are going to be the adductors. And the adductors, they're going to, they don't start in one spot. They actually have a, a little bit of an area where they attach to. Uh, and how they attach, where they attach, in both their origin and their insertion, the origin being closer to the center of the body for this, and the insertion being out towards the periphery. How and where they attach is going to create different leverage. And the way that we're going to create that leverage will affect the movement that we have in here. Now, when we pull this in, if a person did not create a, a kinetic chain, 
you might actually create some hyperextension in the knee. You might make, uh, you might pull yourself out of your lunge. And we actually do want to keep the thighs very open. We want to keep the openness so that prana is still inspired to go down. So we need more work on this to create the kinetic chain. So we're going to use our buttocks muscle. It's going to be a huge one in this front leg. This would be the front leg. Hamstring muscles and calf muscles. Uh, a lot of the muscles, a whole bunch of muscles. We're going to use a bunch of them. And what we're going to create is isometric tone, especially here, so that we don't activate these other muscles and pull this knee out of place or pull ourselves out of the hip opening position in this lunge. So we create a kinetic chain. We're going to stabilize these different areas so that when I activate this muscle, this doesn't move. So when I activate these muscles, this doesn't move. And when I try to isometrically drag the feet in towards the middle, what's going to happen is you're going to notice more upward movement. And this is going to be the shift. So how can we take the legs and open them, which is going to allow us to get movement or circulation way down low into the pelvic floor area, and at the same time, inspire circulation to go back up. And this is how we're going to get circulation rather than just movement or flow. Because in the body, the system of the body, we do want circulation. We want things to circulate in and out, so there is some just plain directional movement. But if we only get things to go down and out, what we'll find in the body structure is that the muscles and the bones start to only promote that. So in every single pose, we are trying to promote circulation. So the opening, helps prana flow down, it helps body mass to flow down, it's going to help lymphatic fluids to flow down, uh, unless something is impinged or collapsed down. But at the same time, like if you were to watch somebody doing second warrior pose and they had deeply curved their low back, they had this kind of sway back posture, that's actually kind of a downward collapse. You see the spinal column is, is compressing downward. So even if we don't know much about the concept of prana, we can look at body mass as part of, of a relationship to prana. So when we separate the legs like this, if somebody separates them quite a bit, a lot of times we'll see either the spine leans forward or it kind of compresses downward. And one of the major ways that we get this body mass as it's related to, to prana is to create this isometric tone. And the isometric tone will use the muscles to hold compartments in, in constant relationship. So uh, they're not really gonna change the position. There's gonna be a constancy in it. And when we do other muscle engagement, we're gonna create movement in an area here, unrelated or indirectly related to the actions going on at the periphery. And this is the chain. We've created, for example, links We've created these links, like the links of a chain, and we've, we've connected them with muscle. And then we activated other muscles, and we pull towards the periphery of the chain links, and we created a movement in a different area. The adductor's main mechanical or compartment movement is to pull the femurs towards the midline. And when we activate them like this, we're not actually gonna move the femurs towards each other um, we're probably not even moving towards each other at all. We're looking for an effect here in the midsection area. And when you notice that this is done very well, a lot of times you'll see the student stand up, uh, give me a little bit of scoop. They'll actually stand up taller in their posture. And if done well, they'll avoid spinal compression. Uh, they might even avoid a little bit of shifting. You'll see in some students, they kind of, whichever leg is forward, you'll see different vertebrae kind of slide that direction. You might even see that as they tone this, the ribs have a greater capacity to expand upwards, upwards and, and outwards too. So there's a systemic effect. The opposite is, separate the legs, and the body tends to collapse downwards. The ribs get heavy on top of each other. Body is trying to displace and get out of the way, so you'll see either a greater curve 
We might even see just like uh, individual vertebrae kind of shift forward. The tailbone will probably stick out much farther. Um, the hip joint itself, the hip socket on one side will dive really deep. And on the other side, you might actually see it kind of lunge towards the front or hyperextend towards the front. And one of the ways that we can avoid all of this movement that's related to the body parts, the bones, the movement that we'll create by coordinating the muscles and the position of the bones will create these links and will actually shift the posture or the potential for posture all the way up in here by how we use these adductor muscles. And this is how we're creating a kinetic chain. It's a little bit about what a kinetic chain is. We'll talk about that more on a different day. And how we're moving prana. Um, and if the prana thing didn't make sense completely, just think movement on the inside of the body. Prana is related to not only the tissues, but the thoughts, the attitude, and the breath. And this is how we're gonna move it in a particular direction. So how do we get upward movement? Somewhere near the base there, we need something solid that holds but at the same time we want a circulation, so we do need prana to move down, and this is how we get good circulation. Creating a kinetic chain and moving prana. Thanks, and uh, we'll work on more of this later.